Hi everyone, today I'm doing a video about using, blending and calculating essential oils for your soap recipes. This is really just a little bit of a technical how-to video on how you can actually work out the blends um, in an easy and efficient way so that you don't waste too much oil and then how do you actually translate your little blend that you work out into the exact amount of oils that you, you need for your recipe to replicate that blend that you tried and tested. Now I know that not everybody can access essential oils or even good quality fragrance oils for soap making um, but if you can I really encourage you to look online um, you know using small bottles of retail type aromatherapy essential oils is a very expensive way to use them in your soap recipes. I used to have a soap making business so I still have quite a large stock of essential oils and I think if you're going to be making a lot of soap or if you've got one particular oil that is your absolute favorite like this is my lemon myrtle oil I buy it in 500 ml bottles and that it's expensive to buy the whole bottle but when you work out how much this essential oil costs per gram compared to a small little bottle per gram the cost is a lot lower to buy them in bulk so do your sums you know work out what's going to be the most cost effective for you in the long term there are a couple of ones that you need to look out for so a lot of citrus essential oils they don't last in soap so the scent fades out of the soap through the curing process so you've really got to watch them the only citrus essential oil, oil that I use these days is tenfold orange oil so that is orange essential oil that has been um, distilled 10 times so it's super super concentrated and it has a really nice strong scent that lasts quite well but if you bought just straight lemon essential oil or grapefruit essential oil that kind of thing they fade really quickly so I'd steer clear of any of those really light um, citrus essential oils. Um, the other ones that you want to watch out for in soap making are essential oils that can irritate the skin and there's a whole list of those. I'll provide a link to a really good website um, in the description box so you can do more reading and research about that but things like um, cinnamon and clove and a few other sort of spicy um, essential oils they can are known to be a little bit irritating to the skin so you do have to make sure that you know um, you're using essential oils that are known to be skin safe in this video I'm not going to talk a whole lot about all the different possibilities of blends for essential oils this video is more about the how to how do you actually physically work out your blends once you've got your little collection of oils but the general principle behind it is that you want a blend that um, is balanced and in, in essential oil blending and aromatherapy and perfumery they talk a lot about different notes of fragrances and essential oils coming to those categories as well you've got top notes middle notes and base notes so top notes are things like they're really light oils things like uh, lemon eucalyptus bergamot peppermint orange, citronella, those really light bright scents, they're the top notes. Then you've got the middle notes, I've got my little book here. <laughs> Some examples of those are clary sage, geranium, pine, palmarosa, uh, neroli, tea tree, rosemary, some of the more herbal kind of scents. And the base notes are a lot heavier, more kind of um, warm and really earthy, sometimes woodsy, sometimes spicy um, essential oils. Things like patchouli, cedar, vanilla, ginger, frankincense, sandalwood and oak moss. You can see my voice went lower as I read those. <laughs> They're the base notes. So the, what, the key principle behind this is that you want to try and have a balanced blend. So if you're only using two oils in your blend and my fav one of my absolute favorite essential oil blends for soap making is orange and patchouli. It's a winner. Um, but orange is a, you know, a, a top note and patchouli is a base note. Um, if you added orange and um, lemon or, you know, orange and bergamot, they're going to just kind of blend in with each other a lot more. Whereas you've got to have some 
some kind of um, contrast in the blend to give it balance. So that's the only principle that I would say I look for when I'm trying to do blends. But as I go through the video, I'll, I'll sh give an example of how I pick out some oils for a blend and I'll show you how I do it. Now I've got quite a collection of essential oils, but I chose four that I know that I like and I think they might go reasonably well together, but I've never blended these four together before. So I'm going to demonstrate how I do that using these four. I've got Palmarosa, I've got Litsi Kubia, also known as Mei Chang, which is kind of a lemony, nice fresh scent. I've got Cedar and I've got Eucalyptus Radiata. And what I use to work out my blends are these little cotton makeup rounds. If you don't have these, these are just the cheap ones from Aldi. If you don't have these, you can use um, folded paper towel or tissues or you know anything like that that's basically got some absorbency to it. You'll be able to put your essential oils on there. If you're like me and you're really frugal, um, you can cut these in half and just use half a one per test blend. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to put test blends on each one of these and you know sniff it as we go and just keep working it out until we get a combination that we like. I'm, I'm just going to use these essential oils today but you can do this with fragrance oils as well. If I want to try and blend those with essential oils for a soap then I will do that as well. There's nothing stopping you from blending fragrance oils and essential oils. Let's go. Now the Litsy and the Eucalyptus they're kind of bright and fresh. Palmarosa is kind of in the middle. It's a bit, little bit floral, a little bit herbaceous. It's one of my favorites by the way. And cedar is a more, you know, it's a woodsy base note. So, hmm, this is all I do. I'm just going to start with cedar. Um, and I'm going to put just a couple of drops, probably maybe start with two drops of each. So that's two cedar. Two Palmarosa, two Litsi, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and two Eucalyptus. Sometimes you get lucky on the first round and you just get the best blend and you think, woohoo, wow, that's great, I don't need to change it at all. So I've got my two of each on there. You could have just done one of each. I'm going to show you how you translate the number of drops into percentages for your soap recipe a little bit later on. Basically, I'll just kind of fold that over. Give it a little bit of a rub like that and then just very gently have a little bit of a smell of that combination. You don't want to inhale it too strongly because you can get a headache. These are really potent um, compounds, essential oils, so that's not too bad. I can pretty much smell everything in that. That's pretty good. So in that I had two drops each of cedar, palmarosa, litsi and yucca. So I'm just writing those down. Make sure you keep a record of things because if you work out something that's a really great brand blend, you're going to want to keep a record of it. That's actually really good as it is, but I'm thinking I can smell the Litsy quite strongly in there. I want to have a bit more cedar, so I'm going to try three drops of cedar, one drop of eucalyptus because it's quite a sweet oil. One, I should write this down. So, cedar three, eucalyptus one, write it down as you go. Maybe just try it just with Palmarosa. I think maybe two, one, two, Palma, two. Give that a try. Oh wow. Yeah, the cedar is a lot stronger in that, which was kind of what I wanted. And I can smell the herbaceousness of the Palmarosa and I can smell the eucalyptus as well. I think that could have probably one more Palmarosa and maybe one Litsy. So I'm going to try this one more time. I really like the three cedar. One, two, three. I'm going to stick with one eucalyptus because that was good. I think I'm actually going to go three Palmarosa and I am going to add that Let's see back in there. I'm going to go one. So I went three cedar, one eucalyptus, 
three Palmarosa and one Litzy. So this is the one I like. You really do have to write it down as you go along. So the trick is, is to try out different combinations and write them down as you go. Because once you've got this number of drops, then you can use that to apply a formula, to apply that combination to any soap recipe you like. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Now we're on to the fun part of the calculations. So we've got our blend. This is the one that I've chosen to go with. And look, I'm not recommending this particular blend. This is just an example to show you how to do the calculations. You know, I've got blends that I've worked out that have got eight different oils in them and all different amounts of drops. But this principle, you can apply it to any little combination that you have. Now, when you're working out your blends, you could have as many drops as you like. I recommend keeping them low. If you're clever and you don't mind using up lots of drops of your oils, you could make all of your drop totals for your oils add up to 10. So you could make sure that every little test blend that you did, make sure that every combination came up to 10 drops. And that would be really easy because what you need to do here is work out what these are in terms of percentages. Say if this all did add up to 10, then you would know that you would have 30% Palmarosa, 10% Litzy Cubia. Um, but these don't add up to 10. So I'm going to show you how to do it when they don't. So all of these drops together, they add up to 8. Now, that total number is important. To find out what percentage of 8 3 is, we do this. We do 3 divided by 8 equals 0.375. I know that that's 37.5% because when you're working out percentages, you move the decimal point. Just imagine that you're moving the decimal point two places, that will give you the percentage amount. So that's 37.5%. The next one we do, we do 1 divided by 8. That gives us, if we move that decimal place, uh, with that gives us 12.5%. And because I've got the same numbers here again, I don't need to work that out. I know that that one is 37.5 and that one is 12.5%. So to show you that this works, I'm going to add these all up, all up and they will come to 100%. 37.5. Okay, so I added those up. I did two lots of 37.5 and then two lots of 12.5. They all add up to 100%. Alright, the next step is... How do I work out then from knowing these percentage amounts, how do I translate that into the right essential oil amount for my recipe? That's the next step. A general usage rate for essential oils in soap making is about 3%. Some I use 2%, some I use maybe 4%, depending on how strong I want them. Uh, and what types of oils they are and how pervasive they are. But a general safe level is 3%. You want 3% of the total oils in your recipe. Now, when I say total oils, I don't mean the total of oils, including your essential oils. I mean the total base oils of your soap recipe. So your olive, your coconut, your castor, the total of those will be, um, that's your total oil batch size for your recipe. So say in my soap recipe, I need 800 grams of oils and I'm gonna put that into um, soap calc or whatever soap calculator I'm using. But how you calculate your essential oil amount from that is easy. What you do is you get your total oil amount. So we're going 800 grams times 0.03 for 3% because we want our essential oil rate to be 3% of the total oils of the recipe. And that equals, in this is instance, for an 800 gram oil batch soap recipe, that is 24 grams of 
essential oil. Let me give you another example. If I had a bigger oil batch recipe, like say my beginner soap making recipe, that batch has a thousand grams of oil for the main soaping oils. It's olive and coconut oil, um, but it's a thousand gram. And I actually put 4% of lavender essential oil in that and 1000 grams times 0 0.04 to get the 4%. That equals 40 grams. So if you see that recipe, and you can have a look at that one, you'll notice that it has 40 grams of essential oil. Now I put 4% in because I like lavender soap and I like it to be fairly strong and it's pretty safe, so you can get away with that. So I hope those two examples explain that. Finally, how do we apply our blend information into our, we're gonna use this one, our particular recipe to work out exactly how much of each of these oils we need in the soap batch. Here we go. We've got our 800 gram oil batch recipe. We know that we want 3% to be the essential oils and we know that that equals 24 grams of EO. So now we need to find out out of that 24 grams how much each of these do we need to put in there? 24 grams, that's our total. We've got cedar, eucalyptus, palmarosa, and litsi. We want 37.5% of the cedar and the palmarosa. And for the eucalyptus and the litsi, we only had one drop and they were 12.5% each. The final step, what we do is we multiply the total essential oil amount for the recipe by these percentages to get their amounts in grams. To do that, we do 24 grams times 0.375. That's for the cedar. We got nine grams. Now, the palmarosa was the same, so we've got nine grams for that as well. Now let's work out the other two. 24 grams, the total, multiplied by point one, two, five. So you're just moving the decimal point two places to the left this time, equals three. So we need three grams each of eucalyptus and litsi. Now if we add all of those up, we get 24 grams, which is our total. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I know that percentages can be a bit tricky. The main things to remember are when you're working out the percentage, you know, what percentage your drops are, you divide the smaller number, the amount of drops by the total, one divided by eight, and that gives you the percent. And then when you're working out the other way around, you know, you have your percentage amount and you want to work out what that is of a new total amount in grams, 24 multiplied by 0.375 or 24 by 0.125 or whatever it might be. I really hope that that clears things up for some of you. And I hope that the little um, technique of using these was helpful too. You know, you can use paper towel, you could even just use some little bits of cloth or whatever you've got. Um, I find that that is the, the best way to kind of get your little blends together, have, give them a rub and give them a sniff and you can pretty quickly work out what goes really nicely together. And then using this kind of method with these calculations, this gives you a way of really accurately getting exactly what blend you, you worked out that you love you can apply that to any soap recipe. Well, thanks for sticking through that with me, everybody. I hope that was useful. Um, I do find that sometimes there's nothing better than just sitting down and going through the calculations on paper. And again, thanks, thanks for all your lovely support on my videos. I really do appreciate it. If you're able to subscribe, if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider doing that to support the channel. Um, and liking and sharing my videos is a really big help as well. Thanks everyone. See you in the next video. Bye.